When we first got that diagnosis, we didn't really know what the life of a deaf-blind person could be. You envisage the worst, thinking about a future for Lewis that, that might be dark. You feel like the bottom has fallen out of your world, like there's no safety net, there's nobody to reach out to. I'm just thinking, come on, it's going to be alright because there's a path out of this. And there was no path out of this. We've come from a place that was really lonely and really isolated and connecting with another family we've been able to join forces and fight this battle together. Can you see what country that is? India. India, yeah. Would you like to go to India one day? When Lewis was born, I mean obviously that was a pretty happy day for us as a family. The first day we got him home, started to suspect that there was something wrong. I said, I don't think Lewis can hear. After he was diagnosed with a profound hearing loss, it was really quite, quite shocking. We didn't know what it meant um, in terms of communication for him and what lie ahead in his future. He had bilateral cochlear implants when he was about 12 months old and that gave him some really great access to sound. But still after that diagnosis, we just knew that there was more going on actually developed quite slowly, so delays in all of his motor skill developments. He was really floppy as a baby. It was really hard to watch him struggle, just because we didn't know what we were dealing with. So that gave us the courage to get the genetic testing that we needed. a long time to process. And I, I remember days riding home from work and I'd basically cry for the first 30 minutes of that on the way home thinking about my son and, and what his future might be. And then just had to regroup. You know, I had to get home and be a good dad for my two kids and be a supportive husband. So they, they were dark days. And where are we going today, Lewis? We were just so desperate to connect with another family or another doctor who had come across Usher syndrome before and that just did not exist. So Lewis is going to lose his vision probably by the time he's 10 with the type of Usher syndrome he's got and um, I mean that was devastating. So what happens sometimes at night? I can't see. And what are some of the things we do to make you feel better when you can't see? Hold my hand. So Lewis currently has night blindness. Uh, he gets quite anxious at night um, because he can tell that he, his eyes are beginning to deteriorate. He also has a peripheral loss. So he, his eyesight is literally just, just closing in like that. Sorry, did that hurt your eyes? We really went into panic mode. Um, we just thought that Lewis needed to see as many things as quickly as possible before he lost his vision. We began to give him some memorable experiences, visual experiences. And it meant as a family as well, we could concentrate on something positive when we were grieving so much. But at the end of the day, we were still really alone and we just desperately wanted to connect with another family. So I was having a coffee in the city and there was this article about lovely Lewis on a helicopter and it said in there how he was born deaf so immediately that picked up my interest because my boy was deaf and he had just had his cochlear implants and it said that Lewis was going to lose his sight so for no other reason than just sheer pessimism I thought I bet that this is what Harry has this thing called Usher syndrome The Congo goes it's be alright I have to be truthful to say that I never truly believed that that's what we were facing. So to sit in that room and be given that diagnosis was really quite difficult. Okay, I'm just going to go and get you some. I'm not eating up. 
We had got to a point where we were very, very comfortable with being the parents of a deaf child using cochlear implants. How do you then start to process the fact that your son is going to lose their sight? The sense that they use to help them hear is going to disappear and really disappear very quickly. Here you go, Harry. Here's a new A380. When we were contacted by Holly and Dan, um, that was amazing. It is certainly one of those articles you could easily flip over and then he's missed it and then our worlds are completely different. We found it quite remarkable that when we found the fellas, they actually lived in the next suburb. Uh, we had connected with another family in Alaska, but to have another family around the corner, that just meant the world to us. It was amazing for the boys to connect. He looked at Lewis and he said, but it's me. And we just had our hearts in our mouths and effectively Harry had never seen another kid just looked exactly the same as him. And I guess he felt, oh, maybe I'm normal. The glasses are the same. We both like trains. I'm a missing dove. I only have one at the moment. Yeah, two. I don't know when I'm going to get another one. Doctors can give you medical advice, um, but another family going through exactly what you are going through can give you that lived experience. How do you get on the TV? Sit on it! <laughs> We're starting to build a bit of a community of people. I've got my notes from our last meeting. Emily and Holly are leading that through Russia Kids Australia. Since we launched last year, we've been able to connect with 12 families with children with Usher syndrome across Australia. So we've built this village and now we can push for a cure. I think in the back of our minds every day there is the thought that science will not be able to, to cure Harry uh, because it is a race against the clock. So while we're really hopeful that there will be a treatment or a cure, we really need to prepare Lewis for the day-to-day -day reality that he is losing his vision. G'day, g'day. How are you going? I'm Jonathan Gerlach and I do paratriathlon, which is triathlon for people with disabilities. Harry, you shake my hand, mate. Don't leave me hanging. Hey, handshake. Yeah, come on, let's go. So I'm born hearing impaired, and uh, the vision loss uh, aspect of Usher syndrome started affecting me when I was about age 15. I have about probably five to six degrees of peripheral vision, so when I'm looking straight ahead, I can see my hands about here, and the daytime peripheral vision just keeps coming in, um, maybe to the point where I'll lose my vision completely. Meeting Jonathan absolutely changed all my preconceptions of um, an usher adult. He's able to be completely independent. Society can put um, low expectations on people with disabilities. If I can have some sort of influence on them to you know, have a more positive outlook on life, and I think they're going to be on the right track and you're the only one that can put limitations on yourself. So they will be able to share their issues and laugh with each other and cry with each other and just lean on each other. The support is everything. We have a new family, we have an Usher family. So they'll all get a flat together, I think. 